magandang araw sa lahat. Bagong araw, bagong aralin. Ang ating pag-aaral ngayon ay ang pentosphere. Kaya nung panghinihintay natin, your sphere starts now! Ito po yung ating Kim, ang Mataong Sachi. Ayun nga po ang ating pag-aaralan ngayon, ang pedosphere. Hmm, what is pedosphere? Ang pedosphere ay nagmula sa dalawang Greek words. Ang una, ang pedon, nang ibig sabihin ay soil. At ang spiral naman, ang ibig sabihin ay spear. Ah, ganun po pala! Para sa dagdag kaalaman, ang pedosphere ang tinatawag ding the living skin of the earth. Dahil meron itong dynamic interaction between the atmosphere, air in, and above the soil. Biosphere, living organisms. Lithosphere, unconsolidated regolith. And consolidated bedrock. And the hydrosphere, water in, on, and below the soil. Ah, oo nga. It exists in the interface of the hydrosphere, lithosphere, biosphere, at atmosphere. Naging malinaw na ba sa iyo yun? Opo, opo. Paano naman po yung description ng soil? It is generally composed of 45% mineral, 25% air, 25% water, at 5% organic matter. Tamang-tama! Mula sa aking napag-aralan, ang soil ay nagmula sa decaying of rocks, which then undergoes to the process of weathering. Hmm. Ang tinatawag na weathering ay ang breakdown of rocks into smaller particles when in contact with water. Ito ay maaaring physical o chemical na weathering. Ang physical na weathering, this is the disintegration of rocks into smaller particles with no alteration in the molecular structure. Ang hangin at tubig ang agents ng physical weathering. Ang chemical weathering naman ay nagkakaroon ng chemical reactions mula sa mga bato na nagbabago sa kanilang mineral composition. Halimbawa ng hydrolysis, carbonation, oxidation, at hydration. Ate Kim, di ba po may five factors na nag affect sa soil formation? Tama ka dyan! Pwede po ba pa explain nung parent material at yung climate? O sige, ito na ba ang share ko? Number one, Parent material. This is important in soil formation because its chemistry and type will determine the kind of soil that will be formed. Number two, ang climate. The temperature, rainfall, and moisture affects the pattern and intensity of the soil. It is forming the process such as weathering, leaching, transportation, and distribution. Climate also affects the type of organisms, biological activity, and the rates of chemical reactions. Thus, soil types vary depending on climate. Tama po kayo dyan, Ate Kim. Ang ating pangatlong factor ay ang topography. This is the gradient of the slope that affects water flow and erosions. Soils in the form of steep slopes tends to be thinner because of the higher rates of erosion. Ang tinatawag namang slope aspect is the direction of the slope phase that affects temperature and moisture as slopes facing the sun are warmer. Meron tayong steep slope which has very little filtration. Gentle slope that has some filtration but less erosion of topsoil. At ang panghuli, ang flat land that has great filtration. Ang pang-apat na factor ay ang biological factors. This is the organisms such as plants, animals, microorganisms, and humans affect soil formation. Our fifth factor is time. 
the formation of the soil is long and a continuous process, which may take hundreds to thousands of years, depending on the climate and the environment. Soil texture is defined as the relative proportion of the particle sizes in the soil, sand slit, and clay. Soil is naturally composed of a mixture of these particles and proportion of which affects other soil properties such as soil porosity and water retention. Ngayon ang ating pag-usapan ay ang soil formation. Ang soil formation, this is the gradual process which involves the development of a succession of zones or soil horizons. Each horizon has a distinct set of physical, chemical, and biological characteristics. Some soils have an organic horizon, horizon O. This is composed of loose or partly decayed organic matter. The surface horizon A is composed of mineral matter mixed with some dark organic humus. The subsoil B is the accumulated clay and other nutrients from the layers above it. The substratum C is composed of partially altered parent material. Some have horizon E that is characterized by a significant loss of minerals or alluviation and leaching. Soil scientists also develop a soil classification system to identify, understand, and manage soils consisting of 12 ordered types. Number 1, ang alfisols, moderately leached soils that have relatively high native fertility. Number 2, ang andesols. Andesols are soils that have formed in volcanic ash. Number 3, aridisols, characterized by being dry most of the year and having limited time leaching. Number 4, endosols, are soils of recent origin found in steep rocky lands. Number 5, gelisols or jellisols, are frozen soils found in the polar regions and located at high mountain elevations. Number 6, histosols have high organic content and form in settings such as wetlands. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time, cards. Number 7, inceptisols, soils that exhibit minimal horizon development, young soils found on steep slopes and mountain ranges. Number eight, mollisols are the soils of grassland ecosystems and they are deep and fertile soils. Number nine, oxisols are very weathered and common in tropical climates. And number ten, spodosols are acid and sandy soils found in moist climates that often support dense forests. Number eleven, rutisols are weathered and acidic forest soils with relatively low fertility. And finally, number 12, yeah! vertisols, are clay-like soils that shrink and swell. Ngayon, humantong naman tayo sa Pilipinas. Ikaw, Ati Kim, ano kaya ang nangungunang soil order dyan sa Pilipinas? Great question, Sachi. Ang nangungunang soil order ay ang ultisols na may 41.5%. Ito ay makikita sa lalawigan ng Rizal, Laguna, Zambales, at iba pa. Ang lupa ay ginagamit naman para sa pagtubo ng pinya, kasava, at sugar cane. Ang pangalawa naman sa aking listahan ay ang inceptisols, na may 13.7%. Ito ay makikita sa lalawigan ng Samar, Agusan, Iloilo, Pangasinan, at iba pa. Ang gamit ng lupa ay para sa paddy rice, diversified crops, at fruit trees. Paano naman po natin mapapangalaga ang yamang lupa, at Kim? Una na dito, increasing soil organic matter. Pangalawa, keeping the soil covered and vegetated. 
Pangatlo, avoiding excessive tillage. Pangapat, manage pests and nutrient efficiency. At panglima, promoting crop rotation. Maraming salamat po, Ate Kim. Nakakagutom naman po yung pangalan niyo. <laughs> Walang anuman, Sachi. O, oh, dapat tandaan na ang lupa ay dapat pahalagahan. Salamat, salamat po! po!